there is something we need It's a leap of faith Oh, if you have the will and the moment to spare It's a beautiful world out there It's a beautiful world out there There are two hills within the Gowan Hill Park. The larger and taller is Gowan Hill and the smaller Moat Hill. The Moat Hill is known locally as the Heeding Hill after its more sinister role as the site of a number of high profile public beheadings in the 13th and 14th centuries. The most notorious of these were the beheading of Murdoch Stewart, Duke of Albany on the 24th of May 1425. Stuart was the Governor of Scotland when King James I was a prisoner in England, but he was found guilty of treason when the King returned. The Gowan Hill is part of a geological formation made from an extremely hard stone called quartz microgabbro, also known as whinstone in Scotland. During the last ice age, glaciers carried much of the surrounding landscape away, but found that the windstone too difficult to shift, and today it remains sticking out of the landscape. The steep slopes on the three sides is what makes the hill so defendable, and such a prized site for forts and castles for thousands of years. The building of Stirling Castle dates back to the 1500s, but archaeological excavation on the Moat Hill have uncovered evidence of an Iron Age fort destroyed by fire during the first century. There are two cannons on Moat Hill, pointed out over the River Forth and appearing to guard the city. From the top of the hill there is a wonderful view of Forth Valley. To your left are the mountains of the Trossachs. The magnificent hills behind the Wallace Monument are the Oakle Hills. The steep southern slopes are the result of a large movement in the Earth's outer layer. Around 300 million years ago, while Scotland lay near the equator, the land north of the Ockles rose while the land to the south dropped. This fault is still moving today and causes very small earthquakes. The large peak directly in front is Dimayat, named after Matei, a Celtic tribe living in the region in Roman times. Another landmark visible from this hill is the old Stirling Bridge. On the 11th of September 1297, Scottish forces under the command of William Wallace and Andrew de Moray defeated the English army under the command of John de Arne and Hugh de Gressingham. The battle, fought during the First War of Scottish Independence, known as the Battle of Stirling Bridge. The Scots were on the opposite bank of the River Forth and the bridge was a wooden structure located to the left of the current 15th century stone bridge. On the morning of battle, the English began to move their troops, both horsemen and men over the narrow bridge. Wallace waited until several thousand of the infantry soldiers and several hundred of cavalry were over the bridge before ordering his attack. The Scots quickly overcame the forces on the north of the river before going on to attack the forces moving over the bridge. The Battle of Stirling Bridge was a demoralising defeat for the English army and showed that in certain circumstances an infantry force could overcome the power of the cavalry troops. Although a natural defensive position, the two cannons were never active on Moat Hill, 
They were purchased by the town council in 1902 from the army at Stirling Castle and moved here purely for decorative purposes. They are similar to the cannons you will find high on Stirling Castle's battlements, which are also trained out over the River Forth. The last army to attack Stirling Castle with cannons were the Jacobites under Bonnie Prince Charlie in 1746. There has been a fortress of some kind at the current castle for at least 2,000 years. The first record of Stirling Castle dates from the 1100s, when King Alexander dedicated a chapel here. The castle has over the years been both a royal palace and a military garrison. It changed hands many times between the Scots and the English during the Scottish Wars of Independence in the 13th and 14th century. As you wander around the cemetery, you will notice the statues. The statues in the cemetery are statues of heroes of the Scottish Presbyterian Reformation, set up when the Valley Cemetery was opened. It was part of the educational and improving atmosphere of Victorian Stirling. There were even cemetery guides. The enclosed figure represents the traditional story of Margaret Wilson, who, aged 18, was executed by drowning in the Solway Firth for refusing to renounce her Protestant faith. She had no connection with Stirling. The monument avoids the horror of her death and presents a more sentimental Victorian idealisation of women. As we pass through the old kirkyard, notice the gravestones are in rows facing east where the sun rises and the last trumpet will sound. The earliest gravestone is 1597. Older stones have emblems of mortality, skull or hourglass, and immortality, winged souls and foliage. Many also have trade symbols of bakers, masons, weavers and other crafts. A reversed four is a symbol of a merchant. Many Stirling people set up their gravestones as status symbols while they were still alive. Down at what he wrote 
I said, son, when you grow up, you'll be fine I know you've got questions on your mind Life is gonna happen one way or the other Whether you like it or not Stop looking for the answers And you'll find what you've got Searching for glory I took out an open And wrote in my story Then I kept walking on down the road Pray he reads what's on the wall And takes to heart what I wrote I said, son, when you grow up you'll be fine I know you've got questions on your mind For the answer